Have you ever wondered how to include categorical predictors in Smart PLS? The way you do it is through dummy or binary variables. Let me show you how to do that. So let's say we have a model that looks something like this. We're trying to predict decision quality and we're trying to do that with playfulness, usefulness, and the comprehensiveness of your use. Um, if we want to include some sort of categorical predictor, in this case, if I look at my data here, I have a bunch of stuff. I have child order, that's categorical. It's like uh, only child, first of many, first of a couple, last child, middle child, things like that. Um, if we had industry up here or religion or marital status, all of that could be categorical and a predictor. Problem is you can't just include something like, uh, you can't just throw in a variable like this and give it child order. Well, I can actually, and it'll run. That's the stupid thing. Um, so watch, if I, if I go like this, stick this here, draw a connection from here to here, it will actually run. But what you come out with might be completely meaningless. So watch, go back to here, and you'll see if I move this, let's see, move this out of the way, it has an effect. It's, it's a very small effect. And it's also meaningless. Um, where can I put this? Ah. The effect is 0 0.053. Um, and it's also meaningless because child order uh, isn't a variable that can increase or decrease, um, at least the way I've coded it. Uh, so we, what we need to do instead is create a set of dummy variables. To do that, first off, let me move all this stuff over so it's not getting in the way. And I'm going to delete this because it's stupid. And what you need to do is go back to your data. I have mine currently in SPSS right here. And uh, here's child order coded this way. Let me just show you how it's coded. Um, child order 1 equals only child, 2 equals first of many, 3 equals last of many, and 4 equals middle of many. Now, like I said before, you can't just include it and expect it to mean something because the the algorithms they anticipate a, as a number increases, like one, two, three, four. As that number increases, so does the value of the trait. The trait in this case is which child are you, and so you can't go up or down in in that the way I've coded it. Just because you're a three doesn't mean you have more child order than a one. Now, this is probably easier described through uh, marital status. If you code one as single and two as divorced, does somebody with a two have more marital status than somebody with a one? No, that doesn't make any sense. So what you do instead is you create dummy variables. The way to do that in SPSS is you go to transform and create dummy variables. And this will pop up. And what you do is let me put that back. You, you go find your variable, which in our case is child order. Pull it over to the create variables uh, box. Create main effect dummies. And then you just need to name, uh, give it a root name. So I'm going to call mine child order. And what it does is it creates a child order one, two, three, and four. If I hit OK, you'll see four new variables were created right here. And if you go look at them, Here's the label. Let me expand that. Here we go. Child order one is about being an only child. So if you're an only child, you get a score of one. If you're anything else, you get a zero. I'll show you in the data here. Here we go. Zero, 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 one. This person was an only child. All these others were something else. What something else were they? Well, we can see they were actually this one, whatever four is, which is middle of many. Um, and that's how dummies work. It's either the presence, one, or absence, zero, of the trait. In this case, the trait is being an only child. And now what I could do is go like this, only child, just rename the variable. Uh, first, I should say first child, last child, middle child. There we go. That's what they all really mean. Now I can save this and uh, bring it over back into PLS, which I've done for you off screen, so we don't have to go through that process. Um, and that process is available in another video, getting set up with PLS. So now what we want to do is bring all or some of those dummy variables into this model to see what effect they have. Let's say I'm really only interested in 
uh, the effect of being an only child versus a middle child is. Um, so I would bring in two new, uh, for lack of a better term, latent variables. Um, they aren't actually latent because they'll only have one value. I'm going to call this one uh, only child, only child. And I'm going to call the other one middle child, middle child. And I think um, being an only child has some sort of effect on playfulness. And I think being a middle child has some sort of effect on decision quality. And let me pull in those values. It was CO1 for only child and CO4 for middle child. I'm going to hide these. Oh, I didn't mean to hide all of them. Oh, well, that works. Calculate. Consistent PLS because I have reflective factors. And the answer is, if I go back to my model, uh, there might be some effect from only child. Not much from middle child, though. Um, if I want to see if it's significant, of course, go to bootstrapping. I'm going to use consistent again because I have reflective factors. It's going to run it. And the answer is middle child, no effect. Only child, yes, there is an effect. Um, right there, p value less than 0 0.004. So that's how you include categorical uh, variables as dummies, as predictors in a causal model in Smart PLS 3. Hope that's helpful.